Church. I'm your brother Kasafo. And I'm your brother Zakwa. Tell them everyone. Hope you all are enjoying the Sabbath day. Today we are looking forward to getting into some focus on our mindset, our goals, our perspective in these times. As there's a lot going on in the world and there's more to come. So Let's dig on in the scriptures here and let's learn about what our focus is in these times that we may have the same mind in Christ. All right. Zachua, can you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, please? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The definition of hunger in the Greek is 3983. We're looking at the metaphoric. I mean, Yache speaks things spiritually. It's to crave ardently, to seek with eager desire. The desire for righteousness, if we're not there, we have to get to a place where it's an honest desire, a craving for us. And the word thirst, the definition in 1372 is figuratively, those who are said to thirst, who painfully feel the want of and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, strengthened. So that hunger and thirst after righteousness, we have to get to where it's a real desire and what we're seeking after to refresh ourselves and be supported and strengthened because righteousness refreshes and strengthens the soul. As if you recall that demon in Acts of Thomas, I think it was chapter 77 or 75, where he spake on how believers are refreshed by prayers, good works, and thanksgiving. So for perspective, like let that be our mindset, what we're seeking after daily, righteousness, and what makes us feel better, righteousness, prayers, thanksgiving that's our delight that's our refreshing in this world um matthew and jump in whenever you will okay so, no problem my oh man matthew 5 and 5 please blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth definition of meek in g 4239 it's mild that is by implication, humble, meek. The Thayer definition is mildness of disposition, gentleness of spirit, meekness. So for us to inherit what's to come, that's our focus in how to be in spirit and carry ourselves in mildness. For understanding of mildness, the definition is not severe, serious, or harsh, when in regards to feelings, is not intense or extreme. It's actually gentle and not easily provoked. You may remember a part of charity is not being easily provoked, so you can see where mildness is leading us unto. So for us, getting a grasp of humbleness and mildness would bring us to the end goal of charity. Can you read 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. 
thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So we get to understand the charity, the end goal of it all. Focusing on righteousness, having it as our desire and what what um what refreshes us, what helps keep us going. Focusing on righteousness and meekness to be mild and humble, submit to the law in all things is our focus to bring forth the works of the spirit of charity. Now, the world is changing and there will be uncertainties. Yet, we have a certainty that if we focus and seek out the righteousness, we'll always have what we need from Allah Hayim for food and raiment to keep us content. Can you read Matthew 6, verse 31 to 34, please? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore, I take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Allah and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, for daily diligence, let's take thought for the evil that is seeking to get us to fall, to cast the lies, and depart from iniquity, rather than being worried or anxious for other things, knowing if we're seeking after righteousness to beware of all evil, we'll always be provided for. As Paul spake of, I know in all things how to be content. As the kingdom is at hand, focusing on making changes for the better is of all importance from our Lord's admonitions. Can you read Mark chapter 1, verse 15, please? And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of Allah is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. <clears throat> Repent and believe, for the kingdom is at hand. The definition of repent in G3340 is... To think differently or afterwards, that is, reconsider, morally to feel compunction, which is basically remorse. Repent. Repentance comes with a change of thinking and a feeling of remorse and dedication not to turn back to what we came out of. And the Thayer's definition helps understand that in it means to change one's mind, to repent to change one's mind for the better, heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. So you can see repentance is not just the feeling bad, but actually a change on one's mind for the better and heartily amending with hatred towards what we actually did so as not to go do it again and to be on guard against it or put in whatever work or protocols or implementation of the law, which is within protocols, as Zach will talk us about, to help us overcome whatever it is because we actually want to come out of it and we don't like that we're doing it, right? The interesting thing with repentance is you can't change the act without changing the 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 thought pattern or, or the the way that you process or or view something if you don't change the actual thoughts it, you can't change the actions so you're going to continue doing the same act over and over which shows that you actually didn't repent because you didn't change your perception of it of what you were doing and how you were going about it you didn't change the mind for the better right so understand family we talked in lessons about reasoning that religious reasoning i have to take the time to flesh things out talk things out with your counselor if you're seeing you're unable to find the solutions or the mindset to help you overcome the action that you're doing that you 
would like to stop, get with that one counselor that you know keeps the commandments and talk about it so that Allah may be in the midst and help shed some light on perspective or 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 insight because there may be something you're not seeing that Allah may show through the dialogue to help understand what's going on. Because if you can't identify the spirit at work or how the spirit is working in you, it's going to continue to happen. And right on with this lesson, if you're going to go to your counselor to understand something, come in humility and actually be willing to listen and to implement the things that may be said, not just getting the information and going on about your way and continuing in the same path. Um, I think that's one of the big things when it comes to a counselor is actually trusting your counselor and actually taking what they say with more than a grain of salt. The meek, he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. One has to be able to look past oneself because that counsel you're seeking unto, you know, it's a person that keeps the commandments. So you know, Allah is already working on them. And you're doing it in faith to Allah because you're actually doing what the law says to do in Sirach about going to a council for guidance. Right. We might have to touch on that just without, you don't have to go into the scriptures, but just explain it for someone who's watching this lesson that this may be their first lesson that they're ever watching of ours. <laughs> so, um, yeah, go ahead um, about the counselor, because you said it we would pick a counselor that it's keeping the law, but that's, we should be keeping the counselor, picking a counselor that's keeping the law if we are aware of it. Yes. If you want to yeah. touch on that. Yes. Um, you, the law speaks on, you want to get you a bit times to a man of understanding and go for counsel to a man whom thou knowest keeps the law. And also he will sorrow with thee if you miscarry. Because this man is keeping the law. He couldn't be keeping the law unless Allah was with him to do it. Because you can't keep the law without Allah as there's only two laws. The law of Allah or the law of the devil. So by you seeing he's keeping the law and he's continuing to grow in the faith. You know Allah is actually guiding him. So when you're going to him for counsel, you're actually going to where Allah Hayyam is. Let a counselor shouldn't be somebody that's going to enable you or say what you want to hear. But a counselor has to be somebody that's going to smite you with love. Let a righteous man smite me. It'll be a kindness unto me. That should not break my head, but it's as fine oil. You want a counselor that's going to tell you the truth because he's not going to suffer sin upon you. Because he loves you. He's going to tell you what's actually going on. And as it says also in Surah, he's going to suffer. He's going to sorrow with you if you miscarry. So after he's spoken with you, for one, he can speak with you because he actually been through it himself. He understands the process because he's now keeping the law after having gone through his own process of learning to keep the law. So there's compassion. And then when you get the understanding and you go to go implement it in your life, you're going to mess up because you're relearning something. It's just as you're learning to walk, you have to stumble in order to get your foot under you and balance. He's going to actually miscarry with you. He's not going to look down on you or think or be negative. He's going to be there to sorrow with you like, all right, man. We miss that, but Allah be gracious, we're still here. He's going to exhort you more and more as we see the day approaching, as Paul speaks of. So you want to have that counselor as opposed to one who is, is wants to be a friend or wants to be liked by you. Validates you. Right. 
if you and another person are struggling with the same thing and both of you are in the same boat, it's going to be tough to be able to counsel one another because both of you are struggling, so you both don't have the answer and you both need the help. So that's a clear indication that that shouldn't be your counselor because it said a, a man that you know is to keep the law. And if both of y'all are struggling in the same in the same struggle, you know that they're not keeping the law. So you actually aren't doing what the scriptures say to actually choosing a counselor wisely. And that's your brother or your sister. That's your friend. We are right. all in this fight together. But as for counsel, we have to keep what Allah says. You have understanding even for the Corinthians. If you read the letter, third Corinthians, some people came with some different doctrine to them. They sent unto their counselor. They wrote on to Paul like, hey, this is what we're hearing. We need understanding because we know what we heard from you or we believe what we learned from you. They knew that was a man that was keeping the law. Likewise, Allah has set things in order as he has. He has the, um, for the body, he has the apostles, prophets, and teachers for the edifying of the body in the ministry. You have to find those people and get the help. That's the simplicity of it. Just have to um, embrace the humility of knowing I'm not the one that has the answers. I need help. It's essential. It's essential to salvation. That's meekness. It's almost like, um, like when a person comes out of um, rehab, Right. And then you they give you that um usually they give you that contact, that person that literally like Yeah, I somebody that had been out of it already. Right. I don't know the name of it exactly. It's um, like mentor, isn't it? I think it is a mentor. Okay. So they give you that mentor and it's the same thing. That mentor is the person that's going to hold you accountable. That mentor is the person that's going to to help you grow, to push you in areas that you may not want to see or you may not want to be pushed in to get you out of those comfort zones so that you can actually stop the habitual things that you're doing that's wrong to actually change, to repent and actually change that mindset in those certain areas so that you can actually change the way that you're operating in those areas. So it's the, it's the same thing. So. And with all this, this is we're speaking of repentance and in encompassing repentance. And this requires belief as well. Because all these works to do these things we're talking about, this requires faith. It's a part of faith. Because he actually said, repent ye and believe the gospel. And the definition of believe in G4100 is to have faith in, upon, or with respect to a person or thing. That is credit by implication to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being to Christ. Believe, believer, believe, commit to trust or commit to put trust with. Where it says to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being to Christ by taking heed to the law and going to find that counselor and coming in humility as we're all to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of Allah Hayyam. That is putting your soul, your spirit in trust to Christ. Hey, I'm going to do what you said to do, trusting that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. You're going to save me. I'm doing what you said to do so that I can be helped. I'm putting myself aside. I'm accepting the truth of where I am, who I am. And I'm seeking your help. And I'm seeking your help from the men 
that you've ordained because Elohim set things in order from the days of Exodus. He said he was going to speak with Moses so that the people will believe Moses. He's always been bringing salvation through men. He, in the New Testament, he has his apostles that people had to go to. You had Cornelius. Cornelius was a good man. He was doing good works. But that didn't put him above the order Elohim had ordained. He still had to go and get the man Elohim ordained to help him get to the fullness of the faith and continue growing forward. He needed someone to lead him. So no, that's what we're doing when we take on the works of repentance to get the help to mild ourselves down, to seek to be lowly, not to seek glory for ourselves or to have it for ourselves, but to have what Allah has for us, whatever that is and however that is, we have to go about it. The Thayer's definition of belief is to think to be true, to be persuaded of, to credit, we have to actually believe these things that Elohim says to do is true and be persuaded of them that this is what must be done. And we have to, it also says, place confidence in. Our confidence has to be in that. Like, I see I'm struggling with something. It's continuing. That means I don't know what I'm doing. Because if I did, I would stop. I'm going to do what Elohim said to do. I'm going to go get the counsel. Because when I do that, when two are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And I'm coming in his name. We're going to have a law class about his name. <laughs> That'll come up. That'll help with this light later. I'm coming is his name in. I'm sorry. I'm coming in his name. And he is in truth. Truth requires humility, meekness, vulnerability. I'm coming in that spirit the contrite and humble spirit, which he doesn't despise, I trust and I'm confident that he's going to be in the midst of it and something's good is going to come from it. I I attest this stuff is factual. Zach, well, I can confirm when I am able to come speak with him truly and straightly about what's going on, solutions come up, answers come up. So it, it works. But you have to investigate the deity for yourself and see that as well, because that's going to build your faith to keep doing it. Right? It's, it's interesting. Like, we know that there's levels to it. And the way that Allah has set it up, he didn't give everybody the understanding. Because... If everyone got the understanding, they would never have to humble themselves. So the way that he set it up is, is he gave the understanding to a few so that others will have to humble themselves to come to the few to get the understanding or to get what it is they need for their salvation. Whereas the same, the same process takes place for the few but they have to literally humble themselves to Allah to get the understanding and get the information. So it's all the same process. It's just people have to be willing to humble themselves. And that's part of the process. That's part of the journey is having to humble yourself to get something that you don't have yourself so that you can gain it. And what you're gaining is humility as well. You're gaining the information to help you in the specific area. And you're also gaining humility. So, which is going to help you in other areas, in all areas of your walk. So just the way he sets it up for everyone to, to come to salvation is just Allah That other definition of belief is to trust in Yache or Allah as able to aid either in obtaining or in doing something, saving faith. 
You have to trust they're able to aid. They're able to help so long as we're doing what they say to do. Elohim said in the book of Samuel, he said it to Eli, that them that honor him, he will honor. Those that despise him will be lightly esteemed. Elohim will meet you where you are. So that knowing that for sincerity, like as long as I'm honestly, genuinely going towards you, you're going to come towards me. Right. Now let's look at an example of repentance. Thank you for the edification, Zachary. That was good. Praise Allah. Amen. An example of repentance in Jeremiah 31, verse 18 and 19, please. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, thou hast chastised me. He's acknowledging mishaps and our lack of prosperity in life and situations, our afflictions from Allah Hayyam. And he's receiving it as for his good, as we should receive it for our good, to repent and to do things differently. Right? And I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned. For thou art Ahaya my Alahayim. Surely after that I was turned and I repented. And after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. He could see his own shortcomings and understood he was in his iniquities when he truly came to repentance. And if you notice, he said, turn thou me and I shall be turned. He got to the place where he realized it's Allah that has to do it. I can't do it myself. Mm -hmm. That's essential. For thou art Ahaya, my Allah You're actually the one that controls all. It's all in your hands. It actually has to be according to your will. But it doesn't take the accountability from yourself. As he said, after I, that I was turned, I repented. Right. I took accountability. You can't put the accountability on Elohim. Hoping for Elohim to just send a miracle that takes the accountability off of yourself. And you place all the accountability on Elohim as if he's an enabler to just turn you. Because even when he was doing the miracles, Yahweh would tell them, go and sin no more. They still had to do the work. They still had to take accountability. Though they were um, delivered from a, an ailment or whatever the case is from their works, they still had to go forth and try again and do things right and not make the same mistakes. They actually had to repent and change the way that they went about things, the way they thought about, the way they perceived and 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 the process of thinking. They had to, it had to be changed. So they still had to do the work and take the accountability. And that's what Ephraim is actually talking about doing in this verse 19. Mm -hmm. He said, after that, I was instructed. So you told me what to do. And I started working on it. I working on implementing it. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed. Yea, even confounded because I'm seeing the struggles I'm having to overcome myself. He's seeing the truth of himself because I did bear the reproach of my youth. I'm seeing who I've been from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. If you read the rest of this chapter, you'll see that Allah he was uh, he was aroused by Ephraim's repentance as he's working and honestly seeking a help and the struggle he's going through, Allah was aroused to save. And that's what he does. Because in our weakness is where he's strong. We have to get to where we're genuinely calling on him for the help. Out of that, just for that, I need help. I really 
cannot overcome this thing unless you help me. There's a precept for that. To understand that's the man, that person that gets to that poor state of needing help, they're actually going to come out of their iniquity. And that's your, that's your learning through that repentance and actually seeing the man that you are and, and seeing where you're coming from and where you pick these things up from. It makes more sense as to why to trust your counselor when they're actually trying to help you come out of those things. So you can actually kind of start putting together what we're talking about just thus far in the lesson and seeing the importance of that counselor when it comes to you overcoming the reproaches of your youth. So. So understanding that. Well, we're going to look at Sirach 11 and 11 to see what we would do without the right understanding that's going to cause us to continue to struggle. And then we're going to see what Ephraim did by seeing he needed help and truly turning to Allah for that help and understand for us that we turn into his ministers and to him praying and also seeking the counsel. Let's see the dichotomy of what would be the outcome? Can you read that? Did it pop up for you? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So Rock chapter 11, verse 11. There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste. And is so much the more behind. So this one, he's laboring. He's studying. He's getting information. He's watching lessons. But he wants it for himself. As in, he wants to get there to be righteous without anybody seeing his iniquities. He's making haste. He's he's just going. He's not getting insight, getting understanding, taking his time to really grasp what's going on. But he's just pressing, just wanting it to happen. But he's so much the more behind. All right. It's not for a lack of work. It's just he's not putting in the right work. He's not applying it. He's getting the info. All right. He's laboring to get the information. He's taking the pains because he's seeing that what he's been doing is wrong and that this information is correcting him. He's making haste. He's learning everything quickly. He's picking up. He wants to learn this and learn that. And he's, he's gathering all the information. But he's so much the more behind because... He has all this information that he's learning and laboring to gain, but he's not applying any of it. So it makes it all null and void. All right. Thanks for explaining that. Mm -hmm. That's perspective. I didn't press that well. Thank you. Now let's see the other man, what he's doing. Verse 12, please. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help wanting ability and full of poverty yet the eye of the lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate so this man he's not rushing he's getting information and he's taking his time to grasp each point to see how he can apply each point yeah it's that wanting ability that means that he's actually trying to implement the things that he's learning. So he's slow. He's learning a little bit. He knows that he has need of help. He keeps that in his mind that I need help and I have things to work on. And wanting ability, he's desiring to apply what he's learning. That's a big difference. He's full of poverty. That means he's humble. See from was bemoaning himself. Yet the eyes of Ahaya looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate. He gave him in time, he would give him the spirit. 
Alahayam looks to the humble. He looks to those that are seeking after him genuinely. So we can understand. It's the only way we're going to get there. And continue verse 13, please. And lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw it marveled at him. So you see him going through the struggle, working to overcome, going through the fight to overcome himself. And people will see it, and they're going to marvel to see one day he's actually going to get it right. All right. The lion is going to deliver him. And he's going to be standing strong upon the rock. Right. So with all of this, hopefully this helps understand the kingdom requires us to come to repentance within ourselves. Can you read Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, please? And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Elohim should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of Elohim cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. We have to actually observe what's going on within us and work to overcome what is found, causing us to go astray, contrary to the law, and hindering us from bringing forth the fruits no matter how hard it may seem or how long it may take to see the spirit of Christ formed in us and attain unto the meekness of the kingdom. Can you read Barnabas 7 and 11, please? But what mean of it? That they place the wool in the midst of the thorns. It is the type of yache set forth for the church. Since whosoever should desire to take away the scarlet wool, it behooved him to suffer many things owing to the terrible nature of the thorn, and through affliction to win the mastery over it. Thus he saith, They that desire to see me, and to attain unto my kingdom, must lay hold on me through tribulation and affliction. That's the only way. There's no easy road. The trial is truly within us. So our focus is to ensure we are walking right within, examining ourselves at all times. And if we aren't taking the trials as learning experiences to critique and implement the law, we need to learn to do so, so that we can be made useful to Allah Hayyam, growing in the trials and not falling away. That's important to really take heed to, because he said, he that desires to see me, Remember, Peter talked about Yache is not seen with the eyes. Because Yache is saying, you desire to see him and attain unto his kingdom. We really have to press into that, reaching in, as he talks about the thorns, reaching in and taking the cuts that comes with it. Take the trial and get a hold of him. Get a hold of having our eyes cleaned so that we can actually see him within ourselves. For perspective, when you're seeing your iniquities, that's a good thing. Because Yache sees them, so your eyes are actually growing toward his eyes. You want to get to where you can see everything, and then you can identify it to be able to get it out. And in time... Eventually, it's going to be out, and it's just you and him. No other demons, no spirit, no other spirits leading away or separating from that relationship with him in you or in us. So, hopefully, that helped for mindset. Like, it's a good thing to see this and to get understanding of it. Okay. We want to take this process with joy, this trial and tribulation to see him and attain unto his kingdom with joy. Hebrews 12 and 11 to 15, please. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, 
but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet. Least that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fall from the grace of Elohim, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Right. So be at peace. We have to be at peace with all. But we also have to be at peace with ourselves, with who we are, and the work we need to do to change so we can actually change by following after holiness, that peace with Allah Hayyam. But be mindful, don't let any bitterness come up in us to be disgruntled or sad with where we are or that we aren't where we think we should be because it will defile us and trouble us, causing sorrow and doubt. And it could also cause the desire to give up or just give in to whatever we struggle with or other mental health issues because we aren't content with who we are or where we are or we are content and willing to put the work into change, all of which can cause us to fall from the grace of Allah. We got to be at peace with the truth of who we are for our healing to begin, as it takes knowing the problem to find a solution and knowing the truth of ourselves, we have to wax strong to follow after peace with Allah and holiness to learn his ways through the trials going on within us, knowing that it's just a test of fire so we can be made useful in the end of it all, bringing forth the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Can you read Hermas, vision four, chapter three, verse four, please. And the golden part are ye that has escaped from this world. For as the gold is tested by the fire, and is made useful. So ye also that dwell in it are being tested in yourselves. Ye then that abide and pass through the fire will be purified by it. For as the gold loses its dross, so ye also shall cast away all sorrow and tribulation, and shall be purified, and shall be useful for the building of the tower. Right. This is the church speaking. If you, this is your first time with this, this is the church herself speaking to Hermas about this. Well, speaking to us all about this, because this was a message for us all. They said, for as gold is tested by the fire and is made useful, so you need to purge gold by fire to make it useful. So ye also that dwell in it are being tested in yourselves. So we're in this world in a tribulation of fire, we're being tested within ourselves to be made useful. Hopefully that helps for focus on the kingdom, for perspective. Allah Haim is letting me go through this so I can be useful to him. Okay. Ye then that abide and pass through the fire will be purified by it. So we have to actually get through it. This is why we're talking about this focus, putting our hands to the plow, pressing forward. We can't stop. We can't let anything hold us back from getting through this fire because we need it for purification. And what can keep us back from passing through? Not casting away all sorrow and tribulation. We have to take everything with joy as an accident that befell us for our good from Allah see as an experience, a growing experience, a learning experience, rather than a tribulation to take it the wrong way. Like Paul talked about, we have to cast off that sorrow. It's not letting any bitterness come up in us, lest we be defiled, as we just talked about in Hebrews. And be at peace, taking the tribulations joyfully, as good experiences, like Barnabas talked about, 
and that will lead to purification so that we will be useful for the church. So, with that in mind, here's our new mindset for focus when the temptations come and in the temptations to come. Sephiroth chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, please. Sephiroth chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Amen. So first, prepare our souls for temptation. When you come into this walk, I can speak for myself. I didn't want to go through anything. I wanted things to just go smoothly. Nothing gets in my way, and I'm just righteous, and there's no trial. But the truth is, I should have been preparing my soul for temptation. You have to actually look for war. You have to look for the trial, look for the trouble, because it's here. As he actually said, the evil of the day is sufficient thereof. It's evil coming at us daily. This commandment, keeping our soul prepared for temptation, it helps us. It helps a lot to be looking for it, not trying to avoid it. Because we know now, I have to go through trial and tribulation to get a hold of Yacha and see him. So bring it on for perspective. Set thy heart aright. And constantly endure. We have the right heart to be prepared for temptation. And endure it. Whatever comes, take it on. And make not haste in time of trouble. Let nothing make us hasty. Because hastiness, that spirit, works at the right hand with the devil with hatred. By precept. So we know that for a fact. If we get hasty in anything, aside from being hasty to do good... It's the devil tempting us. In times of trouble, that's the time to slow down. Be temperate. All right? Cleave unto him and depart not away. Don't let the hastiness cause us to depart from Allah Hayyam, to get into anxiety or vexation, to go away from him. And if we hold on and don't depart, being temperate, trusting in him, we're going to be increased in the end. Remember, we're, though we're slow, have need of help, want and ability, stay temperate. And we're going to be increased in our latter end. Whatsoever is brought upon us, take it cheerfully. Because we know bitterness, anger, wrath, that's for the devil. Take it cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. When Say an experience happens that brings us down or we make a mistake that brings us down. Be patient. Take it on. Like, okay, see it for what it is. Thank you for that experience. And be patient looking for Allah. I am It's going to bring you out of it. Because you understand, hopefully, you're understanding that as gold is tried in a fire, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity are tried the same. So that call in Allah Hayyam has placed upon you, this is what we're called to do. Go through adversity so that we can be useful. Continue working to order your way all right, putting your trust in him, and he's going to help you. Right? But don't, don't let anything deter you from believing that. We have to trust and hold on to that trust that things will change as we implement the things we learn. Investigate the deity and press forward no matter what mistakes happen along the way. That we may grow in repentance and changing our perspective to a holy perspective and not the perspective of the world. All right. Can you read Luke chapter 9 verse 61 to 62 please? And another author said 
Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Yahshua said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. We can't look back at our past or mistakes along the way to get into our feelings or guilt trip ourselves. Everything has to be taken as good accidents from Elohim to help us learn to serve him with our whole heart. It's faith that works hard and keeps pressing towards the goal, plowing away and overcoming whatever weaknesses we see in ourselves. Now, pride, pride wants it to just happen or wants to already be righteous without practicing or training in the works of righteousness or just to be righteous because we do a couple acts of righteousness but the rest of our works are iniquity. These mindsets are not what we need to make it. Let's perfect our heart to think the way a believer thinks and approaches this focus for the kingdom. As we've been talking about, you see, Yachi said, we put our hand to the plow, we can't look back. We started off with hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's a daily focus. That's what we're pressing towards. If we're deciding to follow Yache, that's where our inclination and our desires need to be. And becoming meek, mild, and genuine in everything. Now, for perspective on the approach to come into this walk. We can't come into this walk trying to hide our faults instead of coming to work on them. Let's touch on a precept to get understanding what this means. Proverbs 28 and 13, please. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. The person that covers their sins, they shall not prosper. They won't prosper because he isn't being honest with Elohim, deceiving his own self, and he's actually enabling the devil, covering the sins of the devil's spirits at work in him, just for the sake of one to be held in honor, have a good name in the sight of men, or be seen as righteous. But on the other end, Whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. This man, he will have mercy because he's holding himself accountable to Allah to speak truth, being honest about the shortcomings, being honest about the spirits at work, hindering his growth, seeking the help, confessing to his one counselor what's going on so he can understand what's going on, come up with protocols to implement, and put in the work to forsake his errors. This man is actually fulfilling the law to overcome the devil that Dan spake of for us to speak truth, which will bring us peace and have Allah with us, not to be overcome by the devil through pride of not wanting anyone to know we're struggling or not wanting anyone to see our struggles for fear of their opinion of us or for fear of losing our desire to be held in honor or esteemed righteous among others. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 5, verse 2, please? I think that's a big thing. Okay. Coming into the walk. Coming because we come to Yache because we have things that's going on in our lives that are hard for us to deal with or things that we know are not right. But instead of coming in that sincerity to say, hey, I have these issues. I'm looking for answers. And instead coming to seem like we already have it figured out and that we're already accounted a part of the number, it literally shows our intent of not being genuine and sincere and not being vulnerable and not being without guile or without um, deception to actually come to Elohim and to come to seek the salvation because it really shows our desire 
Are we coming to seek the salvation? Are we seeking salvation? Are we seeking to be esteemed? And it really shows our intent. So it's, it's, it's I thought that was very big. It is big. We can't be saved without it, without coming sincerely and with the right intent. Um, the Testament of Dan, chapter 5, verse 2. Speak truth, each one, to his neighbor. So shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion. But ye shall be in peace, having the Elohim of peace. So shall no war prevail over you. But this precepts help understand why the person that covers his sin shall not prosper. Because he's not being honest, he's going to fall into wrath. He's going to be in his emotions. And he's going to fall into confusion, being afflicted in his mind and in his life from other spirits at work. As we touched on in an anger lesson, and prior lesson, and narcissism lessons, that these spirits come together. They're going to jump a person, so to speak. And the simplicity of not being honest helps fall into all of that, and we won't prosper. But for the person that is coming in truth, sincerely, needing help, wanting ability, Speaking truth to his neighbor, he's going to actually be in peace. Having the Allahim of peace so that no war will prevail over him. This is interesting because how can I be at peace though I still have things to grow? I'm still struggling with things. This comes with faith. If I trust the process... I'm at peace because everything Allah I brings is good for me. He's not giving me anything that is going to hurt me. Everything he's doing is to help me, to make me useful for him. And I'm honestly here wanting to learn and willing to learn. I'm not turning away from him anytime I make a mistake or anytime things didn't go the way I wanted it to. Hopefully it helps understand how David was at peace with Allah Hayyam, though he made mistakes. He didn't wickedly depart. He stayed with the process. I think what helps what you were saying is um, contentment with righteousness is great gain because that contentment is actually what holds you. It's I'm striving for righteousness and I'm content with where I am. I'm content with where I am in my journey. I know that I'm going to get to where I need to be and I just have to be patient, but I'm also content because I'm seeking after righteousness. So I think that contentment with righteousness, the great gain of it is a peace of mind. Amen. Because Allah hasn't given us a spirit of fear, <laughs> but love and a sound mind. That's a trust. Thank you. <laughs> that, that precept really helped. Now, on the other side of it, the man who isn't being truthful so he can learn, work, and grow, and isn't content with where he is and content with who he is, so that he can have peace of mind to work this thing out, the devil will be with him, prevailing over him too, instead of Allah Hayim. Because if he can't catch the lies in himself, or if he continues to deceive himself, he'll be continuing to cover his sins instead of coming to work on the things he's struggling with and work on changing himself in honesty. Isaiah 30 and 1, please. Woe to the rebellious children, saith Ahiah, that take counsel, but not of me. Get that. Talked about having a counselor. <laughs> right. It's not of Allah Hayyam. He's not going according to what Allah Hayyam said to do for counsel. And we know there's only two. Is either Allah Hayyam in all your thoughts or somebody else is there. Our rebellion against Allah Hayyam and his law to be hearers but not doers deceiving ourselves shows we don't have Allah Hayyam in all our thoughts because we are taking counsel of the devil 
and his spirits by evidence of our works. So hopefully that helps. We talked about the importance of going through the proper channels of that counselor. If you have a counselor that when you're following that counsel, you're not actually changing and overcoming your struggles, pray to Allah about where you should be getting counsel. Or if your counselor, counselor is telling you that what you did was right all the time. <laughs> you can do no wrong. <laughs> you gotta, that counselor needs to change. You can do no right. wrong. Yes, <laughs> uh, well, the, the thing is that you're coming to the counselor usually nine times out of ten because the results you got from what you did weren't good. So you come to the counselor. Now, if the counselor is saying, okay, it's everyone else that's the problem and not you, then that is one of those clear indications that that counselor is an enabler. And as we know, especially for our sisters, manipulation is a, a huge thing for our sisters. And their stories, a lot of times, are so dramatic and they're so emotional that it really sucks a person in, though it may not be the truth. So you have to have a counselor that knows to keep the commandments so that the spirit of Allah may be with them to actually be able to see through the story to actually get to the truth. And you want someone that can get through the emotional sides of where you are in your walk in the way that you're you're dealing and men are manipulative too. So you you have to have that counselor that actually keeps the commandments where Allah is with them so that they can actually see the truth of the matter and not only go by what you're saying or what you're portraying. So that's why it's so important to have a counselor that you know to keep the commandments so that Allah will be with them to be able to help you even when you may not want the help and you may just want to be justified, but that's not what that counselor is there for. That counselor is there to get you back onto the straight path and not allow you to go to the left or the right. So that's what you want. You want someone that is going to hold you accountable and that the spirit of Allah is resting in so that they can actually see the truth of the matter to help you. Touching back on the person who may not have come to this perspective as yet. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, say that I have that take counsel, but not of me. And we know that counsel, if it's not of Allah, is of the devil. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. This is key to see. When we have the covering of the spirit of Allah Hayyam, it's not to add sin to sin. That's evidence of the spirit of Allah Hayyam at work where sins are not just being added one upon another. All right. Now, unfortunately, we cover the sin not being aware that we are covering the idols, enabling them to continue in us by hiding our faults. So the truth doesn't come out to expose them. The evidence of us doing this is shown when we add sin unto sin because we are stuck in a season and able to grow from where we are. Thus we have to come in humility, willing to be honest with our one counselor, to be open to vulnerability of showing who we truly are so Allah can be in the midst because we're being honest and when insight and solutions are given, we put the work in to implement what we learn so we can plow away at overcoming, knowing that Allah is with us in the process. James 1 verse 22 to 24, please, or 25, please. James chapter 1 verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. 
The spirit of deceit is at work in us if we are hearing the word, but not doing it for spiritual insight to understand what's going on there. Okay. That is a, definitely something to watch out for. If you see that you are able to hear it and receive it, but then you don't implement it when you have the opportunity, that's something to definitely catch yourself on. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So we see ourselves for who we are, knowing our struggles and shortcomings. When we hear the word, like, yes, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing wrong. This is what I got to fix. I got to work on these things, right? We see ourselves straightly, face to face, okay? Or the, the common one. I know I have to work on this. I know I have this problem. I know when they know it, right? When they say they know it, right? Mm -hmm. For he beholdeth himself and go of his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So right after I've made those comments, all that stuff goes out the window. Because I beheld myself. I seen it. I see what I am. The lesson was great. I gave understanding of what I'm doing, but once I go on my way, I let it all go. It's out of mind. That spirit of deceit has got me. I forget it. I forget what manner of man I am. The spirit of deceit blinds us to forget who we are so we can be on guard, not to give into the desires or struggles we know we have to overcome because we don't want it to be or we want to be someone else than who we truly are or we still have pleasure in our desires or enjoyment in the guile or deceit and if we focus on seeing ourselves for who we truly are at all times it would hinder us from doing what we want to do so it's easier to forget who the man in the mirror is so we don't have to hold ourselves accountable. Understand, this isn't going to help us. We have to keep in mind the truth of who we are, looking in the mirror at all times, so we don't give ourselves any leeway to go after lust, because we are true with Allah and ourselves, looking to him to help us in our weaknesses so that we can continue in the faith. This is important to catch and understand within ourselves. It's, it's you know, we talk about is black and white. It's simple. If we know all these things we need to do, but then when we go all our way, we forget it and we go off into iniquity. It's the spirit of deceit that is using some lust we have to blind us. Because if we really want it, if we really want to do it, and that's our only desire, we're going to remember who we are and take our time and see whatever opportunity presents itself to see ourselves and turn to Allah Hayim. Allah Hayim, I need help in this. I see what's happening. This is a temptation to give into anger or give into whatever spirit I'm struggling with. Give me help to remember your protocols. Remember your law to keep me in this situation we can't forget who we are right yeah that's a big one because if you don't if you don't hold on to what's truly going on within you you can't actually be vigilant yes so because I'm not vigilant to whatever it is that I'm struggling with or the thing, the things that I desire, which you actually have to, which uh, that's probably going to go into something deeper right there. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't actually be vigilant of the things that st you're struggling with, it actually causes you to give into them. And when you give into it, you're given over to it because there's no resistance. And I think that's the bigger part of it is that 
It's an area with no resistance. And that's just a playground for the devil. So you really have to be vigilant and see yourself for who you are so that you can actually fight a war against the enemy. Be a vigilant of the area that you are weak in to then put more energy and more vigilance in those areas so that you can actually overcome it. So we have to be intentional. Right. So with all this, remember, brothers and sisters, the angel of self-indulgence and deceit. When we give into that, self-indulgence has no memories. We forget what transpired. Hence, we know who we are. We see ourselves and straightway we forget what manner of man we are. It's through the pleasure. It's through some desire and the deceit that's helping us forget. But as Zach was talking about, if we're intent on remembering who we are, how can it get us? Because we're attentive. I know what this desire is. I know what I've lusted after. I know what I had pleasure in. So I'm in the moment seeing it. Hey, this is that pleasure that I've been walking in. Now I can actually resist it because I'm aware. It doesn't catch me straightway. It isn't a hasty reaction like, oh, because I was actually on guard. Remember, I prepared my soul for temptation. I was looking for the war. I was looking for the event to come. I wasn't just looking to, for everything to just go without trial, without resistance. I'm intentionally looking for where I can prove myself worthy to serve at Lahayim. And I'm looking for where I can seek his help. You said something very key. You said the desire. And that is one of the major things where I was about to go and that I was about to touch on is that holiness with contentment. It's great gain. The desire and our desires really need to be repented of in, in truth because many of us, our desires are our own desires and they're not the desires of Alahayim. Alahayim has given us what he saw fit for us and anything that we desire more than what Alahayim has given us actually shows that we're not content. And those extra desires of things that we desire ourselves, that Allah has not shown us, that he was going to give to us, cause us to go astray and cause us to error in other areas of our walk. Because we're desiring something that's contrary to Allah will for us. And it ends up becoming a contradiction and it ends up becoming a, a stumbling block because say I'm desiring one thing. There's one thing that I desire and Allah will for me may be different than what I desire, but yet my eyes are focused on the desire. What is it going to cause me to do? It's going to give a place for the devil to then come and bring forth little things, little stumbling blocks for me to then start falling in because I'm going out of the path. That's why it's so important for us to be content with what Allah has given us. Be content with the people that Allah has placed around us. Be content with the, the, the house or the car or be content with the clothes or whatever it is that he's given us so that we don't go outside of the realm or scope of, of that contentment, seeking our own desires. And of course, that's a whole nother level. It's a whole nother understanding but it really does save us from from the lust of the eyes from the lust of the flesh it saves us from those stumbling blocks and stumbling stones just for being content with what Allah gave you because if Allah wanted you to have something you would have it 
And by desiring that thing, it actually causes you to then have a contradiction or to have um, contention between you and Allah Hayyam. And it actually leads you astray. So, of course, that's a whole nother topic, but it's so important, especially in this walk. Um, Casa, if you want to touch on it, uh, we have the lesson grabbing hold of contentment where that's essentially discussed. And in a nutshell, Issachar explained it well. That's actually being the single-minded man because a single-minded man only waiteth for the will of Allah. That's a great um, mindset to start reasoning about or a protocol to institute for ourselves. What Allah wills for me is what's best for me. And let me seek out what his will is for me. You know, that, see, let me seek out what his will is for me. That's the part that I'm touching on because Allah has already given you things. He's already given you things to, to look over or to or to to take care of. Why am I looking outside of what he's given me? That's exactly the point, and that's what I'm bringing up now that wasn't actually discussed in the grab and hold of contentment lesson. It's actually a further edification. So that's why I'm bringing it up. It's because if I'm looking outside of what he's already given me, I'm not content. All right. I'm actually lusting. I'm actually looking for something else as if what Allah has given me is not sufficient. So that's why it's so important to actually understand that contentment where you're not looking out, you're not lusting after the flesh, you're not lusting after the eyes of things, which actually cause you to go out of the scope of contentment, but actually taking care and appreciating the things that Allah has given you so that Allah can bless you with more. Seeing you're being a good and faithful servant and being content with the things that he's given you and taking care of those things to show that, okay, I've given you this, you've proven yourself to, to take care of these things and to hold them dearly unto you. And that actually teaches us how to walk in our life. The things that Allah has given us, even if he does a little thing to help us in our walk, we hold it and we're appreciative of it. Because that's that's why people go into sorrow, because they're not appreciative of the progression. They're not appreciative of the little things that Allah may be progressing them in or giving them little victories here or there. They're not appreciative of it. And instead, they're like, no, I need it faster. I need more. And it's the lack of contentment, even in their walk, that actually causes them to struggle in sorrow. So... This contentment is, is so real because it really helps us in our walk to stay of joy, to stay of harmony, to stay of faith, to stay long-suffering and patient. It helps us in temperance. Contentment has a place in all those things. So, it's, it's, it's just a very important aspect and a very important perspective to, to, the, to change and to shift and to implement in your life. Yeah. We are talking about the focus for the kingdom. Yeah. So we have contentment, <laughs> righteousness, meekness, and contentment. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as far as things Allah has given us, he's given us all his spirit free from lies. Right. So we have one thing talking about seeking after righteousness daily. Our everyday goal is to keep this spirit pure or purify it if we've defiled it. Overcome our iniquities. We've yeah. been given a great thing that that spirit is keeping us alive and it's going to give account about us. So we need to return it back true to our maker. James 1 and 25, please. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, 
but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We implement the things we're talking about today. We will be blessed. We're looking at ourselves. We're not forgetting ourselves. And we're not forgetting what we hear. But we're diligent. That one focus. We're a single purpose of fulfilling Allah will. Returning his spirit pure. Finding righteousness. And becoming meek. Mild. Mild in disposition. Mild in spirit. We will be blessed in these deeds. We have the right focus and the right things to simplify this walk for us. Piggybacking off of the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh feelings. In the world, everything's about feelings. Everything's about passions and feel good moments, so on and so forth. But in this walk, it's not about chasing the feeling of feeling good or wanting to go by what feels good to ourselves. But we really have to submit to what's true and right to Allah Hayyam. Okay. Let's work on putting aside what feels good for perspective and stop chasing what feels good unless you're chasing righteousness and you've gotten to the place where righteousness makes you feel good mm -hmm. okay let's apply ourselves to what's true and right to Allah because we would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Allah if we are chasing that euphoria of feeling good but not chasing righteousness Okay. The way we can chase feeling good instead of righteousness, the way we can do it is by forgetting that person in the mirror and putting on a new persona in the world so that we can feel good or be liked to get the pleasure that we get from the attention or the validation we get from others thinking we're good instead of dealing with the person that we see in the mirror. For an example of how one can be chasing a feeling of feeling good instead of what's true and right to Allah. So, so pretty much what you're saying is instead of acting like the person that you want to be for a short time, actually putting in the work to be that person. Straight up. Right. See yourself in a mirror and put the work in to change that person into the right person at all times. Mm -hmm. And that comes with the desire for righteousness. We're working and focusing to become one person. We don't have multiple personalities. Or we're not different when we're around certain people. Oh, we're not off in a ditch when we're by ourselves because we really have to deal with ourselves. We are who we are. And where our heart is focused on Allah Hayyam at all times. If you find that you can be laughing it up and having a good old time with people you don't know, whether at work or some random place, but then when you're by yourself, you're going through it, or you're around people that really know you, you're not that same joyful person. That's deceit. Right. It's not real. And you have to see this for what it is. I had to see it for what it is. I can tell you honestly. I had to understand it. Like catch myself. Hold on. I was just laughing up with so and so. What am I doing now? We have to work to get. Hold on. I need to be one person. Because I should be joyful. We should be joyful. We have the opportunity for life. We're being taught and purged and taken through experiences to help us be useful to the Allah Hayyam of Allah Hayyams. That's something to be happy about. We shouldn't be upset at any time knowing 
the opportunity we have. So if you find it in yourself, test yourself and see if you, when you talk with certain people, you're, you're, you're more up or you have more energy or more positivity, but then with others, you don't. Or when you're by yourself or when you have to talk about yourself to yourself, you don't approach yourself with that same love and that same optimism. Check and see. And if you find it, great. You can, now you know you can work on changing it to be genuine. And if you don't find it, great. Keep pressing forward. <laughs> So, you know, for a person who is struggling with the feeling good rather than walking in what's true and right to Allah Hayyam, by putting on a different persona for others or putting on a different persona just to enjoy the feeling of being a good person for a time but not consistently and it's not the true you that you're dealing with when you're by yourself or within yourself. This type of person, they can struggle in that they don't want to be corrected because if they show their true selves, they're afraid to do so because they don't want to be corrected for what they're doing. So they'll put on a show. They have a different persona. And then you have where while they're in their other persona because they don't want to be corrected, they'll get offended if you correct them when you can see through the persona that they're putting on. Can you read Isaiah 65 verse 2 and then verse 5, please? Isaiah chapter 65 verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. This is a rebellious people. The same rebellious people, remember, they cover their sin. So they're not prospering. And then they're covering their sins and it's causing them to add sin unto sin. Why so? The way they're walking in is the way of the devil because they did not get counsel from Allah Hayyam. They're walking in their own thoughts. The law, the simplicity of it, that was not enough for them to submit to. It had to be right to them. Or it had to be something that doesn't affect how they feel or how they see things for themselves. Or how they want things to be for themselves. And when you try to correct that person... What happens? Isaiah 65 and 5, please. And I, I just want to touch on something. Oh, go. Go you said when you try to correct that person, uh, it don't matter if it's a righteous chastisement or if it's a um, constructive criticism. Any type of correction is what Kassif was talking about. This yeah. type of person can't take no correction. So it's, it's you're going to get to it. Right. Go ahead when you're ready. Isaiah 65 and 5, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose and a fire that burneth all the day. Notice, that person, they didn't want to deal with who they truly are. Come not near to me. Don't try to expose the real person that I am. Don't try to get close to me. Stand by yourself. I've set up this persona. I've deceived myself because remember, if I'm a hearer and not a doer, I'm deceiving myself. But I'm in agreement with that deceit. So I believe I'm holier than you. And I don't want you saying anything to me to take away from that feeling of that good feeling I get from being holier than you, feeling like I'm holier than you. Walking after their own thoughts. I didn't know it, but that evil spirit has given me a net of deceit to blind my mind to see according to my own perception. 
and I believe it. That's my thought. That's what I think is right. I'm holier than you. Do not say anything to me. Stand by yourself. Keep your comments to yourself. I know what's going on. I know what I'm doing. I didn't do anything wrong. I can't do anything wrong. Because I'm holier than thou. We don't want to be this person. And if we find that we are, it's great to know. Now we can start working on not being this person. When someone shares something with us, whether it be positive criticism or just a critique or just a rebuke and love or even a railing from someone that may be struggling with their own things, instead of just casting it off and being this person that's holier than everyone else so nothing anybody says has any place, search it. Take the time, say, hey, thanks for letting me know about that. I'm going to pray about it. And I'm going to look and see. Be slow like that poor man who knows he needs help. Because in the Proverbs, it says the answer of the tongue comes from Ahaya. So everything, every word is from Ahayim for something for our growth. Whether it be to show us that we are actually doing something wrong or to try us to see we're going to stay humble and assess ourselves to see if we're doing something wrong. Everything is for our good. Right? Anything else that far? Mm -hmm. mm -mm. No, I'm good. Okay. Now, a person that also wants to seek after that euphoria of feeling good <clears throat> or feeling like we're a good person or we're righteous, though we have struggles, but we're not dealing with those struggles by just seek, seeking after that feeling of feeling good by putting on another persona or not or hiding our faults so that people can't see who we really are. Another thing that that person seeks after is wanting to be enabled. Okay. They want someone to tell them they can do no wrong, basically, or always tell them what they're doing is right. Isaiah 30, verse 9 through 11, please. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Ahia. Look there, lying children. That deceit, that spirit of deceit had encompassed us. Yeah. We couldn't hear the law in lies. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to stay where we are or to deceive others by being a different person when we're around them. It's deceit. It's lying. It's not true. It's not hearing the law of Ahaya. Being this rebellious person, not walking according to Allah and lying to ourselves, when people that actually are trying to do right or trying to help us do right come around, when we have those conversations with them and they're trying to help us make changes or talking about things they see because they love us and they're not suffering sin upon us, well, let's see how we react to that. All right? Continue, please. What say to the seers? See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Stop seeing what I have going on within me. Stop telling me the truth about what I'm doing. Rather, tell me what I want to hear. Lie to me and enable me. Tell me a lie and make it sound good. Don't try to help me. He goes on to say, I want to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Get you out of the way. 
turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So not only do I want you to enable me and tell me what I want to hear and justify me, I also want you to stop what you're doing. Because you're doing right. You Though you don't say anything, you're witnessing against me because you're doing the right thing. And I don't like it because it lets me know that I'm not doing right because I know I'm not doing what you're doing. So I want you to stop too. Stop doing what's right and stop talking to me about what's right and stop trying to help me by loving me in truth to tell me the truth. Get Yache out of here. You really got to understand it's not a, it's not about you. It's about Allah Hayyam. The The spirit of deceit that's over them is literally trying to keep them away from Allah Hayyam. So if you do come and speak things that are of righteousness or of the law, it's going to be cast away. And you're going to become the enemy because you're speaking against the spirit that has dominion over them. So what happens is, is that spirit starts trying to tear you down because it wants you to fall away from Allah too. Because that's the main focus of the spirit in itself. That's why I said, get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. They're going to then start attacking you, trying to lay those stumbling blocks in front of you to get you out of the spirit too. Because that's the whole point of it. So that you will come out of the spirit and that you will start operating in the spirit that they're operating in, well, that spirit will have dominion over you as well. That's why I say it's caused the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Like, let's get him out of here. Sorry, Cotton. No, that was, <laughs> raise our hands, right? We need this understanding to know what's going on here. Morphia. Now, <clears throat> hopefully, you understand at this point. Putting this simply, we need to be genuine. We need to be genuinely who we are, working on overcoming the struggles or the shortcomings that we see in who we are. That's the only way to get a hold of this thing. We want to become that happy person. Truly, not just for a time, but not just in certain crowds. Let's be without partiality as a lesson that was recently had. Be that one person at all times. And we, want, and we can get there by being content with Allah Hayim and what he gives us. And with his simple focus for the kingdom of hunger and thirst after righteousness and being meek, mild, Focusing on keeping the thing we all know he gave us all is that spirit and returning it pure, free from lies. To free it from lies, we have to come out of the idolatry. We have to come out of the deceit and be attentive to who we are at all times. And not get lax, not taking time off from this fight. But rather, looking looking for the trials, looking for the war, looking for the temptations to fight and stand in the faith. Okay? <clears throat> We're going to get one more example of, fortunately, how we can be if we're not genuinely here for Allah and we're seeking after that good feeling of seeming right in the sight of others, rather than actually putting the work into get right. Can you read Ezekiel 33, verse 30 to 32, please? Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30. Also thou, son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak to one another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, 
and hear what is the word that cometh from Ahia. And they shall come unto thee as the people cometh, and they shall sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Notice this person, these people, they came and sat before as Elihu's people, but they weren't truly his people because he saw their heart, where their heart's actually going. This is that being a hearer and not a doer, deceiving ourselves. Because Elihu shows right here, he's not deceived by it. He sees what we're doing, but he knows our heart's going after our covetousness. So in the realm of being honest, we're not fooling him. It's ourselves we're deceiving. And if we find we're coming, we're gathering, we're hearing the word, but when we go out and about, we forget who we are. We're not doing them. That is a good sign to know. There's something in our heart that we're covered in after that's not what our hand wills. We need to identify it. All right? If we see we got much love in our talk, in our speech, it sounds good. But in our heart, we're not the same person because of our covetousness. We got some self-searching to do. We need to go be honest with our counselor about what's going on within. So we can stop enabling that spirit that's got a hold on us. Or those spirits that have holes on us. So that we can start to come out of it. And stop covering idols. But actually seek after the covering of our higher spirit. Which is true. Right? Continue verse 32 please. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do not do them. This is interesting. We all know everybody has their genre of music they like, but you know how you can get into the feeling of a song, the euphoria of it in that moment. But after the song is over, it's over. Yeah, some of us who are struggling to wear the gospel, it sounds good, it sounds pleasant. All the things we hear in the moment of the lesson or in the moment of the teaching, it sounds very good. But once it's over, it's over. After the lesson, we're back to ourselves and we're not doing what it said. This is not who we are supposed to be to attain unto salvation. Pride is what will cause a person not to hear the words of holiness. But having their own standard or idea of righteousness would not submit themselves to the righteousness of Allah. I am. Seeing the feeling they have or the feelings they're holding on to, they're holding fast to those feelings based on their own standard of righteousness. This is essential to come out of if we can identify it in ourselves. If we see we're hearing the words, it sounds good. But when we go out in life, somehow we're forgetting who we are and what we heard. And we're doing something contrary. Pride and whatever desire, whatever lust thereof is in us, is affecting us. And we need to get some insight. Because if you don't understand what it is to know how to overcome it, you're not going to get past it. All right? Especially if you feel like you're righteous. Like, especially if you have that feeling or you operate in that fashion that you are doing things right and you're not doing anything wrong and you are righteous. Once that feeling in itself should be one of the main things to, to get you to analyze and to examine yourself. But if that is not where you catch it, then when you are seeing that you're you're holding fast to your own righteous standards and that they don't they're not in agreement with Alahim's, that's Alahim willing, that would be the second line of defense. And hopefully we don't have to get to a third. Uh, Les Cost is about to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> 
You want to avoid the third. <laughs> you want to avoid the third. But some mishap, some crazy thing happening. You know full well it's from out of here, man. Catch it while you can, man. Let's save, let's save ourselves the headache. Man. Now, it's interesting that what you touched on because Paul teaches us to be the opposite of that thinking we've already attained or we're already righteous. Philippians 3, verse 12, please. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. We don't think we are the elect, or we've already attained unto righteousness. Nor do we think we're perfect in pride to not seek growth and blind ourselves from our faults. Rather, we're poor. We have need of help. We understand it. We agree with it. And we're willing to walk with that perspective, knowing that we need the help. We see who we are. We're looking in the mirror. And we're not turning our face away from the man we see in the mirror to give place to any desire that would help us stay where we are. We actually want to keep that man before us so that we can do the works and the 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 protocols needed to help overcome that man. We see our adversary and we're not forgetting him so that we can continue sinning. That's going to actually help us. Right? And we want ability. We don't think we got it. We don't think we got it figured out. We want the ability to overcome these things. And we know that it can't happen unless Allah Hayim do it. So it's not about us. Okay. So we're going to go through the proper channels to get that help from Allah Hayim, as he commanded in his laws, in his testimonies. Okay. This is how we operate, like Paul speaks of. Verse, um, continue, please. <clears throat> but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Yahweh. Following after it. We're following after the perfection. We're following after Allah and his spirit. By the humility, seeking after righteousness, being content, and being meek, being mild, patient in the process, and being at peace with the process we have to go through. We have to keep following after Allah and his righteousness. So we keep pressing forward, plowing, learning ourselves, working on the protocols to overcome things we struggle with, not getting wary or doubtful, but encouraging our souls to stay positive and optimistic in faith and get the help from counselors that we need when we see things that we're struggling to overcome. Confessing our faults to Allah Hayim, so they would see the humility and our willingness to be vulnerable, showing our sincerity and our intention to do what's right. We do these things so that his compassion and help us and give understanding of what we need to grow from whatever it may be that we're struggling in may be stirred up. Don't let any spirit lead us to seek to do it on our own, as it will only make it harder and set us further back in our walk. As we touched on earlier about the man who's laboring, but we'll touch back on it again, actually. So rock 11 and 11, please. There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste, and is so much the more behind. We don't want to be going through the afflictions and stuck in a season, not learning what we need to learn in that season for the hardness of our hearts, not being willing to change and not actually implementing the things we're learning so that we can change. Continue, please. Investigating the deity. All right. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help, wanting ability, and full of poverty. That's the person we want to be. Slow, patient, mild, having need of help, knowing that we need the help from Allah Hayim, and his help is the only way we can actually do it. And we want ability. We don't think we already know it, or we got it, or we can do it ourselves. We know he sent forth 
prophets, apostles, teachers for the perfecting of our faith. So he sent help for us and we're going to find that help because we want to attain. And we're at peace knowing that we're full of poverty. We're lowly. We know we're not exalted. We have work to do. And Allah I am be with us. All right. Continue, please. I, um, if I can touch on something real quick, because the times we're in, there's a lot of false prophets, men and women. Um, and when it talks about a counselor, one that you know of to keep the law, the law is going to be a main thing to help us in actually differentiating false prophets and true prophets in these end times. Because if a man is coming to you with his head covered and he's prophesying to you, you have to understand that man is not keeping the law and that's not the spirit of al -Hayim. Like, it gets very, very dry cut. If a woman comes and she's prophesying to you and her head is uncovered and she's calling on idols, you have to be very mindful of who that woman is and what spirit she's operating in to not lead you astray. This is this is something that's going to be very serious in these times, and it's already here. So I definitely want to touch on it because you have to be mindful of the law, and you have to be mindful even of what the Shepherd of Hermes talked about concerning true and false prophets because you, these things are going to save us and not cause the devil to lead us to the left hand or to the right. And it's very important in these days because a, a false prophet can lead you to die. And I I, I, I really, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I have to put it very straightforwardly and bluntly like that, but I just have to give the, the true essence of where it is going to lead because that's what they want. They want you to perish in iniquity they don't want you to to die in righteousness because it doesn't behoove them it doesn't behoove the one they serve so just be mindful of the law and examining all things by the law so that we can actually stay on the right path don't forget also be mindful of the women teaching in the church amen it's the law. Same thing. Yeah. I'm with you. If I'm not mistaken, it said a woman to teach in general. They can be prophetesses. All right. All right. No, first Timothy two and twelve, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to absorb authority over a man, but to be silent. That's more than just in the church. If you have a woman that's trying to break down scriptures to you and teach you, I know it's it's, it's still teaching. the same spirit. Yes, to a man, I mean, it's still the same spirit. Like so, just you have to be mindful of a woman teaching, or if she's of of certain authority over a man you know what spirit she's operating in because there's no woman teaching in the scriptures. There were prophetesses. There were women of leadership uh, when it came to government, but there was never a woman that Allah set to teach the people. So it's not going to happen now. There's no liberation of Allah that he's going to change and, and, Things are just going to be different now. He's the same Allah that he was then that he is now. And you can't use liberty scriptures, which are not even referring to that, to then justify you breaking the commandment. So we have to be very mindful of that spirit to understand what is actually happening and what they're trying to do to lead the people astray. As for teachers in these end times, Allah said is going to be the two witnesses and their two prophets, which are males. All right. Isaiah and Jeremiah, according to 2nd Ezra, 
So we know by precept there's not a woman to raise up in these end times to lead the children of Israel, not just the children of Israel, to lead all believers in Christ Yache unto salvation. And to substantiate things by scripture, to know women should not be teaching in Revelations 2 and 20. It said, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. So you see, this is a spirit of old, where a woman will call herself a prophetess and use that calling upon herself. It didn't say Allah Hayim called her a prophetess. She called herself a prophetess. You, thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Allah Hayim, he, what he's outlined in the law is to protect us. Understand that he's doing, he set that law to help protect the sisters from the devil. Because if you get into that spirit of Jezebel, it's going to cause people to transgress. It's going to teach them to commit fornication because you would already be operating outside of the order of Allah Hayim by teaching in the first place. That's one thing that they should have caught. She came in the guise of a prophetess, but she was teaching the people. There's a difference between being a prophet and a teacher. I'll let you touch on that. Cause that I, for for a believer, they should have caught that. That should have been the red flag. Like, hold on. Like you're coming saying you're prophesying, but you're teaching. Like what prophet speaks by inspiration. So it's when Allah I am and the spirit of Allah I am is in the person to speak. A teacher, they actually teach in the law by the spirit of Allah I am, but they give an understanding. So from what I understand in the scriptures. The teaching is actually for the priests anyway. So, I know. The law really does simplify things, doesn't it? It does. And he prays out for him for And, of course, you know, there's going to be a man of the seed of Jesse from the precepts. The law of shall not depart from between Judah's feet. So, everything just comes together in one story. It's one prophecy. Okay. Judah just falls under um, Shem. <laughs> Fall under Shem. <laughs> All things about the law. <laughs> yeah, the little Chesedek. Yeah, the Chesedek. <laughs> so, in the simplicity, we stick to the simplicity of the law. We can't be led astray. Right. Right? The law of the testimonies. Hopefully that helps for focus for the kingdom, knowing the times to come, because there'll be many false Christs. Right. Right. We're in Sirach 11 and 12, the rest of it, please. Okay. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate and lifted up his head from misery so that many that saw it marveled at him. And so let's be the meek person that's seeking help, believing we need the help from another who we know keeps the law while we don't think we have it for ourselves. Let's also get further understanding of how we're supposed to approach this gospel for our focus. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 17, please. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So, a believer, even the apostle himself, working to overcome himself, he forgot the things that are behind. He didn't hold on to his past. He didn't hold on to his mistakes as he was learning himself. He kept pressing on to the things that are in front of him, which is apprehending that charity. That's the end goal of the mildness we're working toward, the righteousness in charity. That's the end goal in Yachi that we're working towards. Continue, please. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Allah in Christ Yachi. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, 
to be thus minded. For if in anything ye be otherwise minded, Allah shall reveal even this unto you. Now, we get to see what perfect is in the sight of Allah a person who they are at peace with who they are, they're at peace with the process they have to go through, they're mild, they're not easily provoked, and they're willing to keep working and not holding on to their mistakes and looking back and keep turning back every time they mess up or guilt tripping themselves. But they're actually pushing forward. They're plowing. They're looking forward. They're taking every experience in, as a learning experience. And they're coming towards our hand. They're not letting go. That's a perfect person. That's a person that's going to attain unto salvation. Because Allah Haim, eventually, he's going to look upon them and raise them up from their lowest state. <clears throat> so this is the mindset we all need to have as well, to be on one accord in the body of Christ. Yache. We have to be perfect-minded like this together so that there can be an environment that's cultivating fruits of the Spirit. Continue, please. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Right. We have to be one mind. We can't have different doctrines or different perspectives or different viewpoints on how we are to attain unto this salvation. We got to be one in agreement so that we can actually get there. Continue, please. Brethren. Be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. So here we are. We learned all this stuff in this lesson today, so we can be followers, as Paul is an example for us, so that we can follow Yache by what he's teaching. And we have to mark those that are after the same thing, following that example. Find people who walk in the same mindset and focus for the kingdom that the apostles teach to help guide and partake in this journey with us. All right. We hope this was edifying. Hope it's helpful for focus, perspective, understanding, and encouragement to grab a hold of this walk and get to his kingdom. Make sure that you follow us on YouTube, um, follow our channels on Instagram, um, TikTok and Facebook and also visit the website at www.hebrewreaders.com Anything else, Zachar? Good, man. Praise Allah. Amen. Praise Him. All right. I'll be with you all and Yachay be with you. Happy seven. Ciao. HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church.